Cushing. <laughs> First of all, I'm really fucking excited all of you are here. First No Shame of the Year is awesome turnout. We have, was going to be 12, Alex Fella, but 11 <laughs> really awesome acts that, that we're super excited about. Um, yes, we first we start off with announcements. We, you know, shamelessly, shamelessly promote the department um, and the school and whatnot. So first thing we need to remember is our town. <laughs> It's cool. Uh, what? Where? Where is it happening? It's happening in here. <laughs> October 4th, the weekend of October 4th and October 12th. Our town is going to be great. And then after that is fucking A. What are the dates for fucking A? Ken Parks? Ben is fucking A. And at some point. <laughs> During the semester, there will be auditions for the spring semester, which is the Great American Trailer Park Musical, and Oleana, directed by Brooke Edwards, who is not here, and Mr. Chris Otwell. And so it's going to be Woo -hoo! awesome. Hey, hey. Okay. And is there anything else in the community or in the school that people want to <coughs> announce? I mean, I don't know about all the things, and you're more than welcome to throw shit out there. No? Going once, going twice. So chili cook-off. Chili cook so the cook Mac, that's right. Run by Grace, it's gonna be I'll awesome. Eat some that. chili. Yeah, Carlton Sunday, 3.30, Student Center, get free chili. <laughs> free chili, man, what could be better than that? So, awesome. Now, we're gonna lay down some ground rules. We don't have many, but we do have three very important rules. Rule number one, don't break yourself. Don't hurt yourself, we like you. Come on, it's gonna be easy. Number, rule number two, don't break the space. We like this space, we use it a lot, don't don't hurt the space. And rule number three, don't break the law. That one we're a little bit less uh, leaning on. You know, it's safe space, but try not to do crazy shit. Okay, cool. And, as you know, your piece can only be five minutes. And at four minutes, Miss Laura, who is our techie goddess for the night, is gonna do this. She's gonna give you a warning, at five minutes, she's gonna do this. Oh, sad, you're done, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. And yes, tonight, actually, Mr. Evan Miller, who is my bitch, just kidding. Um, he's gonna be filming tonight, so if you want any of this for like a personal portfolio or anything like that, we're gonna put it up on the YouTube channel for No Shame. So you are being filmed tonight, just so you're aware, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's introduce the act. It's gonna be a great time, guys. Sit on the ground if you must. I sit on the guy's lap. It's a pretty tasty lap. If you're really comfortable, so let's start with the lap. Everybody get in! We're not that comfortable. No, but I'm not going to give you a gym because I want to sit in the back. My pants are still on the ground. It's really not. Oh, we're going to get up on the ground. Yeah, there's some seats up next to Chelsea. She doesn't like hard. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I just want to sit in the back. That sucks. See, I thought you did. Oh, no, I don't know how to do it. You can just read So, what do you think is going to be the most interesting piece of the Me too! You're going to do it right. Are we all settled? Yes. Yes. Thank you, my dear. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and I apologize if I don't know your name, although I think I know just about everybody here. Um, you're going to read the title in the way that you see fit. So the first title, Lord Mason's here. Lord Mason's going to read number one. Okay, okay. Loud and proud! <laughs> love poem number 626 for the love of color. Color. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two. Spoke correctly. Chad Raymond. Read 
Freestyle, number two. Freestyle. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. Let's start real read number three. Mmm, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Describing driving, or the wet pavement, the rain like spit across my forehead as I slid into the passenger side window seat, when all I can feel is that throated smile on my nape, thumbing my capillaries like freshly sorted mail. I'll write about the ordinary mundane regularity of mowing the lawn, how I cut corners, pray for dandelions beneath the blades, so I can get rid of all my wishes for you at once. But it's really your nose I'd like to picture, because it squishes like sand when you sneeze, and nestles neat and hard in the dip of my collarbone while you sleep. I like the purpled gray of pebbles in the evening, the slapping red of the cardinal's beak, lemon-stained teeth licked clean. And there's no correlation to you, because for you, ordinary doesn't cut it, and neither does likable. Somewhere, with the rivers of tadpoles and water pale and green, the sounds I relish, the snapping of my mother, for instance, and the smell of rose petals, dried and dewed alike. Somewhere they've all slipped into memory. And of course, there you stand, with bones thin as wires, laying hands like soft brick on my lips, heady and able. And here is where you come in for the fourth or fifth time, irises thick as mud, face so goddamn bright even the stars sit like gum pennies in a jar. Maybe later I'll fold this poem up into a bag and try to write, to write my way out. But for now, I give it to you like the morning hands out her light, rayed fingers burning with quiet. And this one is For the Love of Color. One out of every nine men has a mixed up retina, is forever trying to match crayons with their beds like a crop of kinky, cranky quator wing tuplets refusing to go down for their afternoon nap. It's bad enough sorting soccer uniforms from his company's shirt in the laundromat down the street, clutching to the handle of Clorox II like a blind man to his cane. 
Siri not available. Worse yet, <laughs> worse yet is the Christmas mass and his wife's penchant for his and her outfits. She suggests a green tie and that red blazer she bought in Macy's during the 4th of July sale. But there's enough trouble sorting out which pair of socks go together, and don't all blazers sort of look the same? <laughs> if it weren't for that damned X chromosome, he'd have a chance to buy violets instead of bluebells. Understand what rainbows are all about. Pick the right group of parents to sit by at his son's flag football game. The only salvation to a colorblind eye is the paint by number sets he'd get as a kid. A parrot swing peppered in fours and sevens, a code as natural to him as the golden mean. I know because my grandfather couldn't see his reds and greens, always cracking open the tiny capsules of paint, bland as the bottom of wells, like a five-year-old flips disinterested through the A's in the dictionary until she comes across the armadillo, round as a rock. It would often be a yellow, a throbbing azure that he'd recognize, pupils dilating with delight, and out would come the leather sketch pad, the pages unnumbered, not delineated for his wandering eyes, the most spiraling suns and dewy cornflowers whipping from beneath his regimented hands. It didn't take long for me to wish to see strawberry muddled with stem, rose with thorn, those shiny arrangements of plastic berries with holly leaves, even my watermelon earrings, to taste the silver of his rain, to smell the burst of his rapeseed in spring. experiment. He's going to play some type of music. <laughs> and I'm going to try to robot do it. <laughs> All right. We'll see how it goes. Thank you. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm always amazed, thoroughly amazed, by people who pray, meditate, do yoga, and then they're always stressed out. <laughs> it trips me out. I thoroughly believe if you're praying, meditating, and doing yoga, any one or combination of those items, and you still tripping, perhaps you need to switch up. <laughs> or really believe the thing that you're praying, meditating, or yogationing on. <laughs> I firmly believe it always blows my mind. It always trips me out that people will come to you with their blasted problems when you didn't ask. <laughs> people assume that what's going on with them is the most critical item in the world. When I am positive that if I talk to 99% of the people in this room, you have something that could have you bugging, tripping the hell out. <laughs> and so we must never assume that our individual problems are greater than anyone else's. Who in the sound blazes fuck do you think you are? That your problem is more important than mine, is more important than hers, is more important. So I personally trip when I hear this kind of thing, if I find it amusing. And so I often myself, since I'm human, when I hear this kind of thing go down, many of you have heard me say this before, but I'm not joking. I want to take a pencil and stab you in the side. <laughs> I am serious. But because I am peaceful, I refrain from that. And I sit down and I play music for myself. And a lot of this music I share with others. And right now I'm going to do what I call the chill mix. There is a piece that I composed many years ago for a friend who was going through some trouble called Tried and Tested, which the, it has become one of the songs that the Flavor Unit, the Heritage Ensemble, does almost every year. I'm going to fuse it with a piece I wrote when I was about 14, which is crazy called Inner Preservation, and then a piece that will be done in the Flavor Show this March called Chill, Chill. And Chill was done for a play that I did a few years ago with Manyongo Jackson. It's a trip, fun thing, but Chill. The basic theme is the same. I've talked for five minutes, so I know the light will be blinking. <laughs> uh, let me get myself some space. I was a big fan of Cool in the Gang, still am, and Urban Woo! and Fire. Oh, yeah. they had Woo! Cool in the Gang, Urban and Fire have these heavy horn sections. So basically, this piece, I used to have this band called Stone Incorporated. And we had this horn section and like 900 vocalists. And it was a cross between Sly and the Family Stone Woo! by Incorporated Earth, Wind and Fire and Parliament Funkadelic into the group. So spinning yeah. them all together, it was a weird happening. <laughs> so in a presentation, is what it starts with, and that was a piece that was an instrumental. It will flow, and just bear with me. Here we go.
started online dating, which I found to be a very interesting experience, so much so that it inspired me to write some songs, which I hadn't done in a while. Uh, most of them are funny, but not the one we're doing tonight. I hope you'll come back throughout the season because we have some really good stuff planned for you. Um, but tonight's song, I always like to tell what inspired it. Um, it was the first person that I really struck up a conversation with and a connection, um, internet and emailing, and then we talked on the phone, and it was great. I was really looking forward to seeing this person and meeting him. And then he said, you know what, I don't think you've been divorced long enough. I think it's a rebound, and I'm not going to go there. Mm. And that was that. Mm. And so this song is about missed opportunities. And I'm going to come over here. Oh, <laughs>
punishments. We have two new additions okay. because some people think their tickets be on right time now. for this yeah. thing. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Alex. Jeez. Um, so, um, Alex Miller is going to be doing a piece called Captain Katie. Sorry, Alfred, you're not going left anymore. Um, oh. And oh, Jonathan right Kirk oh. is going to be doing a piece called Blood Note. We're very excited that they're going to be here with us. And I'm going to ask that you guys not leave right away when they go because Mr. Cameron Hall is entering a film contest. <coughs> and we're supporting him in his artistic endeavors, and I have to do a derpy thing. And so I'll take two seconds, and if you all can sit tight, your beautiful Woo! and amazing last half, No Shame, who's up next? Woo! No Shame! We didn't really know people would be sitting over here. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh. ago we both like blues we never really practice together so we're just gonna try to improv something here so bear with if it's good it's good if it's not no shame
not come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Emily. Woo! And yes, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna be doing a poem, and it's called Nothing. So <laughs> there it is. See? No. Mm. Um, okay. So it's called Nothing. You know how when you feel really intense emotions and stuff, and it's like super, super like feelings? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the opposite. <laughs> All right. Nothing. Some people are afraid of their emotions. That's not what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of the moments when I feel nothing at all. Nothing. N, the numb cold that travels O over me, T for the trembling in my H, hands and knees and I in the pit of my stomach where N no one has ever dared to G go. Because nothing can't really be harming me. That wouldn't make sense. You don't make any sense, Emily. What are you even saying? <laughs> nothing. I'm saying nothing. There it is again gnawing through my skull and out the middle of my forehead. It's dripping into my eyes, leaving only a blank stare. The nothing sends a fire through my nostrils until I can't smell it stink. Then it travels onto my tongue and infiltrates my only escape. It's taking away my power and leaving nothing. Don't worry, it's only nothing. <laughs> nothing cackles as I lay heavy in my bed, unable to get up from the weight of nothing. Nothing bathes in my tears, urging me to produce more. I mean, who wouldn't cry if they were able to feel nothing? Nothing peels away my skin, layer by layer, with its razor-sharp blades, until I have nothing left. But I don't say anything, because I feel nothing's hot breath on my neck. I see the reflection of nothing in the mirror. And even when nothing isn't with me, I'm paranoid, anxious, angry that I gave up so easily for nothing. But you fight the nothing with your everything. Give it your all because nothing has nothing on you. Oh, 
floating down the river drinking freedom's left no room to think where are you now oh ill men now oh conversation I had with my nanny uh, as because I do not consider Playboy to be pornography. So I started thinking, what is considered to be pornography? Uh, I know many of you are unfamiliar with this concept of pornography, so I phonetically spelled it out for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so as I am uh, a um, <coughs> professor and a man of science, I kind of sat down and started thinking about uh, what, what kind of equation, what I could put together that would equate pornography for me. <laughs> so, uh, the big P, pornography. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of different factors that go into what makes up pornography. The first one would be... Do, 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 Age. At different ages, different things are considered pornography. Back back when I was young, before uh, all the resources that you guys have today, <laughs> back when I was young, when you were in middle school, the right section of a Sears catalog could be considered pornography. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so age factors into this, okay? The next factor would certainly be experience or exposure <laughs> you guys are growing up pretty quickly today you know so you're getting your earlier bloomers mm. earlier bloomers than me uh, and this can be intentional exposure like you know planning a nice little weekend with some honey or two or whatnot <laughs> or this can be accidental exposure like if you're ever wanting to kind of double your pleasure double your fun and if you're searching twins you might get accidentally exposed to twinks they can probably school you on that. Okay, so there's, uh, there's, there's your age, there is your amount of exposure or experience, and then there's a second why here. That certainly is important in pornography because 
Uh, this is not your age, but the age of whoever might be in the video that you're watching. You can watch, you can watch something that, uh, if it has some 18-year-old, that could be considered pornography. It might work really happily for you. If it's an 89, 95-year-old, <laughs> same exact scenario, same situation, that's probably not going to be pornography for you. Okay. <laughs> A.V. Availability. Uh. Availability is oh so important in what constitutes pornography. Um, you have to have a lot, of, a lot of options. If someone's in prison, maybe a husband on a really short leash, we might once again be looking at that middle school Sears catalog as an option for pornography because there's not a lot out there for you. Okay? And then, certainly, do, 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 do. I guess this is great. Oh, what time is F? F. Oh. F is a big factor in this here thing. Fetishes. Ah. <laughs> 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 you know, so might, be, uh, might be dust, dusting off some bowling balls. Oh, I'm almost done. Almost done. Wait. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Okay. So this is the equation we're looking at, guys. Uh, this equation doesn't work for everyone, but with many things in science, if we adjust some variables, if necessary, you can probably find an equation. Look what we have became. We're the children. Behave like one. 
No more why I act this way. You calling me, baby? I don't know you. I am in love. I have my man. He's up above. He loves me this I know. He has told me so. And no, I'm not tripping because this is me. And that's why I'm going to be a child of God. That's what I will be. surf like p pontoons and monsoons and stay high high puffy like cancel cartoons your cowardly dog a bitch sort of like mine but your double d's are just joints inside of your spine my rubies are maxed out your rug is for rats you only touch pussy twice that's for birth and cat scratch thought you could write just one piece and then hide in japan but we're back in the barnyard like a backyard of gans you'll be just a chalk zone when i catch you alone the only real monster here is bentley kennedy stone <laughs> I'm your father, no make-believe. Your style is static. I'm shocked you can say you got puffy G's. Do you hear what I'm super saying? My power level slaying those praying for laying on hands by naked brother's band. I'm a samurai. While you're jacking off, I pacify. You need a survival guy? Wait till mine's declassified. You've been burned so bad, it's like you got crusty crabs. <laughs> Lyrical acid, basic to me. Cooked it in Dexter's lab. I'm grim but not evil. You're a cow and chicken. Stay away from me from my place like highbrow Wiccans. I'm the kid next door you should be look looking out for. I'm number one, so I don't wear these glasses for the sun. You're number two. At best, you're a shitty sidekick, but at worst, you're like new SpongeBob. Should I die quick? Yeah! When I flow, all they can say is Johnny Bravo. Barely gotta say shit like bo 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 so slow, calm, yet brain dead like Ed. I'm cocky, like dragging my balls on your forehead. The only man who can rhyme in this land before time. Y'all primitive like Boomerang, I air on prime time. Oh, For those of you who ain't figured it out, I'm talking TV shows, which means Italians got no place here, like Super Mario Bros. <laughs>
everyone. How are we doing? So last year, my sister-in-law, Katie, found out that she had celiac disease. So she couldn't have any gluten in her food, and that really sucked. And at Christmas time, all my nieces and nephews came, and they kept asking her, hey, Katie, why can't you have pizza with us? Why do you have to eat your own food and then bring your own separate stuff? And I, I felt bad because she was really shy about it. So I said, hey, kids, give me like one hour, and I will tell you a story that will explain all that stuff, okay? So she didn't have to tell it. So this is what I came up with. <laughs> Captain Katie, the pirate allergic to gluten. <laughs> On a pirate ship of terror that would scare your honest men lived a pirate, Captain Katie, who would plunder now and then any paddle boat that pleased her, any kayak or canoe. Not a person could appease her till she satisfied her crew. But one day, poor Captain Katie, for some reasons unbeknown, disagreeing with her supper, chose to lie in bed and groan. What is wrong with me, she wondered. Who could ever diagnose how a healthy pirate captain could be feeling quite so gross? She went in to get her checkup, and she found out what she had. An intestinal condition that she picked up from her dad. <laughs> it was celiac, they called it. And it meant from here on out, any food <coughs> containing gluten she would have to do without. No more wheat and no more barley, said the doctor in his notes. Keep the rye bread off the table. You should stay away from oats. <laughs> this is terrible, thought Katie. Those are foods I love to eat. Have you ever stopped and counted all the foods containing wheat? <laughs> oh, Captain Katie got so angry at the news that she was told that she gathered all her crewmates and did something rather bold. I declare a war on gluten, she announced before her men. If there's food that I can't handle, no one else shall have it then. <laughs> they commanded every merchant they encountered on the sea. Time to toss out all your barley. From now on, you're gluten free. <laughs> but one sailor didn't listen. He thought Katie was insane, so he packed his boat, determined to go right on selling grain. Captain Katie pulled him over, and she punched him in the jaw. <laughs> Why, how dare ye, shouted Katie. Disobey me, pirate law. <laughs> it's not fair, the sailor told her. You can't tell us what to do. Just because you're anti-gluten doesn't mean we should be, too. Captain Katie was astounded that this man could be so frank. Uh, to correct me on me vessel means you'll have to walk me plank. <laughs> but before her men could push him to the sharks way down below, Katie's heart turned into mush, and she protested. Let him go. <laughs> I, she untied him on the double and admitted she was wrong. Whether gluten or gluten-free, I think we all should get along. I withdraw my war on gluten. Uh, she told the sailor man, hold on one second. <laughs> she withdrew her war on gluten, and she told the sailor man any time he sailed his boat in, she would help him sell his brand. I had no idea, the sailor said to Katie and her crew, that avoiding all this gluten could be quite so hard to do. He assured her on his vessel there would always, from now on, be a gluten-free assortment that her kind could nibble on. <laughs> so they both had learned their lesson. There's no need to have it banned. If your friends cannot have gluten, keep alternatives on hand. <laughs> Soon the sailor said to Katie, by the way, his name was Drew, that he'd love to be her matey oh. if she'd only say, I do. <laughs> Hi, you silly sailor! They got married. It was nice. They served wheat bread at the wedding, but they also offered rice. <laughs> sitting there, you've maybe had one too many, and um, you do something you know you're going to regret, you log into Facebook, and uh, you go look at your ex's profile. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this is about that. It's called Staring Into the Sun. Of course she's still beautiful. Her lips parted in that smile. She used to give you after a kiss, her taste soft and warm, lingering. Lingering on your lips and your neck and your soul. That hair, that hair that smells of flowers and rain and hope. Cradled by the wind, a dance frozen in the click of a shutter. Those eyes impossible, reach into the lens of that fucker who does photography on the weekends. <laughs> His logo star in the corner of the picture, one of its stares stabbing into that bare shoulder that you once stroked. 
You knew what you would find. You knew it would dazzle you, blind you, hurt you. You knew you were staring into the sun. You close the page and see spots for the rest of the night.